Well, good morning. Welcome to C3. I'm glad you guys are here as we are wrapping up our recalculating series. We're talking about how we can recalculate our lives. Sometimes we're heading down a path and uh, we think we might be going the right direction. And then sometimes there might be something that comes in our way that tells us, you know what, maybe we need to make a U-turn. Maybe we need to do something else here and go in the right direction. We need to change directions. We've been going over different things over the past few weeks. And, and this morning, really what I want to do is more of a, a, a recap, a, a kind of a rehash really quick, but, but really to remind ourselves of what it means for us to recalculate our lives. We've been going through the story of the prodigal sons, as I like to say. There's two, uh, the tale of two sons. Uh, I used to grow up always just learning about the one son and not really paying attention to the other son that's in the story. But, but the other son that's in the story is as important as the other son that we have a big story about. And if you've been with us over the past couple weeks, um, you know what that's about. But um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But before I get into it this morning, I want to ask, who are my direction people? Who has a great sense of direction? You're just, you're, like if you go somewhere once, you can tell everybody, yeah, it's take a left and then we go this way and then that's how you get there, right? Anybody else have zero directional skills as I do? All right? I am bad, y'all. It is really, really, really bad. And it's probably just my head as well as where I'm at most of the time. But I do not have directional skills. I will lose my car coming out of Walmart. I do not know where I parked. Anybody else? Like, I need to, like, take a picture of the aisle I'm in like I'm at King's Island or something. You know, I'm parked at Scooby-Doo 22, you know, or something like that. That's the only way that I can remember that stuff. But I have zero directional skills. There are people in this audience who can attest to the fact that I will drive right past your house even though I've been there a million times because I, I do not, I am not good at directions. I actually get upset, and I shouldn't, but all the time, even the guys I work with, they, they'll be like, fields, the exit's coming up. Exit, exit. The same exit we take every time. And I'm like, I know. I probably would have missed it if they wouldn't have reminded me. I, I'm just, I have zero directional skills. I'm not good at it. So in this day and age, I am thankful for a GPS because, um, Boy, I tell you, I'm not sure I could make it. A um, uh, little quick story. I had just gotten my license, and I was excited that, that I finally get to drive and go places myself. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy's here. Um, I told Jimmy, I said, Jimmy, come on, man, get in the car. We are going. We're heading somewhere. We're going somewhere. So the first thing that pops in my head is the Huntington Mall. We're going to the Huntington Mall, right? Well, I remember in my head from my parents driving and stuff how to get to the Huntington Mall. It was getting back home that was the issue. Um, I went past our exit. And I went past another exit that would have gotten me home and went past another exit that would have gotten me home. Eventually, we got home, but it took us roughly uh, probably about an hour to get back from the mall, uh, just from all the U-turns and all the changes that we had to make to be able to get there. So my directional skills are way off. And so we've been talking about how we are really going to be able to get back on that road that we're going to have to take. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the different roads that we take and the different options that we have every single day of how we're going to live our lives and what direction we are going to go. And a lot of times we think that we're on the ro right road in our lives. A lot of times we're going down a path that we think is the right way to go. But sometimes God actually just hits us right with that recalculating and says it's time to turn around. It's time to get yourself to where you truly are need to be. And so I want to discuss just for a second the different roads that we're able to go over. So the story goes, right? There's two sons, right? They're working for their dad. And one day the, 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 the younger son says, dad, I want, every, I want everything that's owed to me and I want to go do my own thing. And if you've been with us, you know that that, that, that means the only way that you're really supposed to be able to get that is if your father is dead. The only way you get the inheritance is if your father is dead. So he's basically saying, Dad, you're kind of dead to me right now. I just want what's mine, and I want to go do my thing. Well, the father gives him what he wants, and he goes out, and he starts spending it all. Not only does he spend it, but he spends it kind of wildly, right? He's, getting, he's, he's, he's just not very disciplined with it, so he's doing whatever he wants with it, right? He thinks it's going to last forever. Well, eventually, not only does he run out of money, but there's a famine that actually hits where they're at, and, and he's in a really, really horrible spot. Very, very rock bottom at this point in his life. So much so that when he goes to work for someone, uh, they have a trough uh, for the pigs to eat. And, and the stuff that's in there, he's like, man, I would eat that right now. But he can't even get that. 
That's how bad off he is. He, he can't even get the pig slop to be able to, to, uh, to keep himself full just to be able to survive. And then in a moment, it says that he came to his senses. In his moment, he has a recalculating moment. Boom, hits him right upside the head. He realizes, wait a minute, the hired servants, all right, the people that are the lowest of the low at my father's house, they are living better than me. Their, their stomachs are full right now. And here I am struggling just to survive. So what I need to do is I need to actually just go back home. I need to go back to my father. But I've really screwed up. I've really messed up. So I, 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 I'm just going to have to go there and tell him, listen, just make me one of your hired servants. I'll just do what these guys are doing because I wish death upon you. I wanted what was mine. I don't deserve to be called your son. So he has this whole situation going on. He's walking home and he's deciding he's going to do that. And he's, he's, he's practicing his speech as he goes there. And as he go, goes there, he's ready to say that. And it says that the dad saw him, was looking for him from afar off. And he goes running and he grabs him, right? And in this moment... He's reintroduced into the family. He, he's back into where he was at. And, and it's this beautiful story that he, he calls for a robe to be put on him. He, he wants shoes for his feet. He wants to put a ring on his finger. He, he's, he's giving everything back to his son. He's saying, listen, you are my son and you're still my son. And that's never going to change. It's, it's a beautiful picture. But there's another guy in, in, in this story that ends up, because to me, when I used to read it or, or see it as a cartoon growing up, you know, a little focus on the family VHS I had, I remember it was like, that was the end of the story. The son's back home. Hallelujah. End of story, right? But no, the story doesn't end there. There's another brother, and he's, he's out in the field working while all this is going on, which is what he's been doing. He's being obedient. He's doing what his father told him. He never stopped working. He never stopped trying hard. He never stopped putting his best foot forward in everything that he did for his father. And we end up finding what he thinks of this whole younger brother coming back and, and being able to just come back into the fold, right? Look what it says here. I want to pick up in Luke chapter 15, verse 25. Verse 25 says, Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? Verse 27, your brother has come home, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. So we have the older brother who's been working out in the field. And you got to think, of, I mean, really, let, let's just envision this right now, okay? You're working for your family. All right? Or you're working for someone who you have been an honest, hard worker your entire life. There's this one low life. There's this one idiot, right? There's this one dude that you're like, dude, I hope one day you get fired. I hope, I cannot wait till you're not on this job anymore. You're lazy. You don't do any, you, you're just the worst of the worst, right? And I'm doing my job. I'm putting my head down. I'm doing everything that I can. And you find out one day he left and you're like, thank you, Jesus. I've been waiting forever for that guy to get out here so we can get some work done, right? And then you're out doing your thing, and then one day you, you come back from working, and, and you look, and you're like, well, what's happening over there? It's like, hey, remember that, that, that guy you used to work with? Yeah, unfortunately, I remember him. Yeah, they're having a party for him right now. A party. In fact, they took the most important thing that they had, and that's what they're eating, right? They're, they're actually, they're singing, and they're dancing, and it's a huge deal right now because he's back. So try to get the mindset of where the older brother is right now. And so the first, the first thing that we have to think about here, right? The first thing I want you guys to look at, and this is the most important, um, I want you to look at the Father's Road with me. This is one of the, the avenues that we can go. The Father's Road. I switched these up. I was going to go the older son first, so excuse me. But the Father's Road. I want you guys to see the Father's Road here. Look at the story a little bit more. Verse 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you, and you never disobe I never disobeyed your orders. You never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Look at what the father says. My son. The father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. 
the first road that I think we all can come to agreement on, that we need to be able to look at and be able to go towards, is the Father's road, right? And what is that road? What, what does that look like every single day for us to be working and living on the Father's road? That's a road where you have and understand unconditional grace and love and forgiveness, right? Because this is what the Father shows. The Father, who was, who, whose back was turned on by His Son, right? His Son left Him and said, listen, I'm taking everything that's mine and I'm out of here. I don't even care about you anymore. You're dead to me at that point. He says, no, listen, not only am I going to bring you back in, but I'm going to run and I'm going to hug you and I'm going to kiss you and I'm going to bring you back into the fold. I'm going to give you everything. We're going to have a party for you. Last week, Trent told the story about this girl who, who came home and they literally had a welcome home party after her life was in shambles. And he, she thought no one was going to be there because she, they were going to be so embarrassed. They didn't care about all that stuff. They were just glad she was home. It's the same situation here. This son of his was lost and is found, was dead, and now is alive again. And he was able to show who he was to him and said, it doesn't matter because you are my son and I love you. This is the road of forgiveness. This is the road of love. This is the road of grace. He even invites the older son, right? The love isn't just shown to the younger son. The love is also shown to the older son, right? The older son is like, listen, I'm so angry right now, and I've been working so hard. And he says, yeah, exactly. Get in here, and let's celebrate together. You've done awesome. You're my son. Everything I have is yours. Come on, bring it in here. Let's go. He shows the same love and acceptance To the older son. There's no respecter of persons. It's the same unconditional grace and love for each and every one of them. But yet, the older son, he goes a completely different direction. These two are living completely different lives, doing completely different things. And yet, there is one father who loves both of them equally. This is the road of grace. Have you been traveling that road of forgiveness in your life? Have you been traveling a road where you actually have acceptance for the people in your life or the situations of the things that are happening? Because here's the thing, and here's where I stumble too. I, have, I, I travel that road where if you're good to me, I'll be good to you. I travel that road that if you respect me, I'll respect you. Too often I want to make sure that I'm getting before I give, right? Too often I want it to be a two-way street. And I want to say, listen, if you obey all the rules, then I'll obey all the rules, Right? Unfortunately, God doesn't work that way. And we want it to be able to be this two-way road. We want to be able to say that we're going to work by our own rules. But that's not the rules that God works by. Jesus was telling this to a bunch of people who followed the rules. He was telling this to a bunch of people who said, Listen, we will only forgive if they show that same forgiveness. And that's the only way I'll do it. And he says, No, no, no. No, I already love them. I already accept them. I already take care of them. I already call them my own. He reminds the older son, everything that I have belongs to you. Why? Because you are my child. You are my son. I love you. I care for you. You are my family. So let me ask you this. Who are the people in your lives right now? Whether they're, they're, they're righteous, they're good people, they're good to you, they're good to your family, they're good as a coworker. they're good and all that stuff. Who are the people who have turned on you? The people who you don't like. The people who you don't get along with. The people who have hurt you. The people in your life who you would not give the time of day to. Ask yourself, am I walking that same road that the Father walked? Am I striving daily to show love and forgiveness the way that God has shown love and forgiveness to me? The Bible tells us that we can love because God loved us first. That's the whole reason we're able to do any of this. We can forgive because of Christ's forgiveness that He gives us on the cross. That is the only way that we can have this life together. Because let's be honest, we're family. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a a, 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 a follower of Christ, the Bible tells us that we're one family. Now, that doesn't mean that being family means everything's, you know, Brady Bunch, right? Doesn't mean everything's Partridge, right? It means there's going to be problems, right? We're going to have issues. We're more of a Roseanne family around here, I think, right? We have a lot of issues. Things happen. Things come up. 
But in the end, reminding ourselves that even though we have to be blunt and honest and real with each other, we are able to stick together because we are family and we are able to show forgiveness and love and grace the same way that the Father has shown that to each and every one of us. So the first road is the Father's road. The second one is the tough one. And unfortunately, this is the road that I believe a lot of us find ourselves on and I myself have found myself on many times. The other is the older son's road. The older son's road. Let me read to you one more time the beginning. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He was out working in the field. He was doing his job. He was doing what he was supposed to be. He was being a good boy. He was doing the job that was tasked in front of him, and he was doing it to the best of his ability. And he believed that because of what he was doing and how he was acting and the things that he was doing, that the love and acceptance was there because of his work. But in this moment, when he has this realization that, wait a minute, that son who turned his back on you, that son who wasn't doing what he said, he gets to still be a part of this family. He still gets to be a part of everything that we're doing. That doesn't sit right with me. I don't like that. In fact, so much that it makes me angry. In fact, it makes me so upset that I don't even want to go in the party. I don't even want to sit at the table with him. I do not even want to go into my father's house because of the fact that he is going to be in there. The fact that he is going to be sitting at that table. Too often many of us are walking the older son's road. You work hard, you follow the rules, you read your Bible, you go to church, you, you don't cuss, right? You, you, you do all the right things because that's how we were raised. And, and, and great way to be raised, to work hard, great way to, to you know, my kids cuss. I'm going to be like, what, what was that? What'd you just say? Right? I mean, like, it's, it's a good thing, right? We got to take care of what we're doing. We got to be able to work hard for what we have in our lives. But the problem that arises is when our acceptance And ultimately, our identity is found in our hard work. When our identity is found in the things that we do instead of who the Father is. Often what we do is we we put our standing in front of God with how we've done that day, right? And and if I do A, B, and C, then I'm accepted, then I'm loved, then, then God is proud of me. But it's those days when I trip and fall and I mess up that A, B, and C's don't happen that I find myself saying, well, God has it out for me today. God's going to strike me down for not doing what he's called me to do. I guess I'm not good at this. I guess I don't find myself in the right standing and I, I don't get to be in the same house that God calls us to. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is we turn on everyone else, and we project that upon everyone else. Even though in my life I want to work hard, and I want to put my best foot forward, and I want to find myself in the best standing with God, because see, that's how our mind thinks, right? What we end up doing is we project that upon everyone else. And when we look and we see someone else who stumbles and falls, or someone who messes up, or maybe they're in a, a tough place in their life, what we say is, shame on you. Shame on you. What a bad Christian. What a bad Christ follower. And we find ourselves being the judge, jury, and executioner in someone's life with Jesus. And we find ourselves walking the older son's road. And here's the toughest part about that. Here's the hardest thing that I find as we look at this story. The worst thing about this is that we have two sons. We have one who has lived a completely different lifestyle from the other. Both equally loved by the father. But at the end of the story, the party is happening in the house. And the son who was obedient, the son who worked hard, the son who was righteous, the son who did every single thing that the father said, didn't go in. At the end of the story, he was outside of the father's house. Now remember... Who was Jesus talking to when he was telling this story? 
He had two groups. He had regular people. He had, he had people who were following him, his disciples and others who were listening. But more importantly, he had these two groups of people who were teachers of God's law. They, they knew God's law up and down. They knew the rules. They knew the things they were supposed to do. And guess what? They did it. They did it by the letter. They did everything that they could. And because they followed the rules, they were in good standing with God. Yet, as Jesus told this story, you see, you and I, when we listen to this story, we sit there and we go, oh, what a sweet story of a son who was lost and now he's home. How sweet. Those guys would be losing their minds as Jesus is telling this story. Because they knew exactly who they were supposed to be in the story. They knew that they were walking the older son's road. And in this moment, Jesus was telling them, sorry to tell you, boys, but it's time to recalculate. It's time to get off that road. It's time to find yourself on the Father's road. And unfortunately, you and I find ourselves in the same place. So are you finding your acceptance in your work, in your accomplishments, in your position, where you are at on the scale of... of, of, of uh, of being uh, um, uh, at your work or, or, or with your family? Are those the things that are giving you our identity? You must ask yourself, if that was not there, who are you? Who do you find yourself to be if those things were no longer there? Where are you finding your identity? And so let's take a second and just recalculate. Let's take a real second right now and recalculate who we are and what road we are supposed to find ourselves on. You're probably just like me and you don't even know it, that you have zero directional skills. You and I are unable to find God on our own. You and I are unable to know exactly where we're going. God gives us signs and wonders all through this world. And we say, God, there has to be a way to know who you are. And so God, through his word, shows us exactly what that is. Look at what it says here. Verse 31. My son... The father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because his brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The good news about this for you and I, even though we try so hard, is that we can't work ourselves into our standing with God. We can't. We absolutely cannot do enough to be able to get to him because no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you read your Bible, no matter how many times you go to every church function and everything that we have in store, no matter how many free for falls you've been a part of, how many Santa's workshops you do, now how many good things that you end up doing, your standing with God doesn't change because of the work that you do. You cannot work to salvation. We have to find ourselves in a place where we understand from the Father's road that love and forgiveness that He gives you and that He gives me. Think about it. It's such an easy yet hard concept for every single one of us. I struggle with it every single day that somehow because of what I have done, because of what I have done and how I have acted, that somehow that changes my standing with God. Unfortunately, what we end up doing is we become internal and we move everything towards ourselves, and we say, well, I'm able to be saved because I do this and I do that. Unfortunately, what we end up doing is making it all about ourselves instead of saying, no, I am actually in the right standing with God because of what He did, because of the life that He lived, because of the death that He died. Because of what he did, I get to live forever with the Father. I get to be a part of the party with the Father. And so ask yourself, as you're recalculating right now, and you're really thinking about that, what road do you find yourself on? Do you find yourself on the older son's road? Do you find yourself walking this place where you're, you're putting your head down and you're giving it everything you got? And on the outside, you may look like uh, Billy Bible or Susie Sunday School or whatever you want to call it, right? You find yourself walking and everything looks great, right? Yet you're on the outside because you're finding your acceptance in your work. Or have you found yourself walking towards the Father? Find yourself in a place understanding that even though you don't have it all together and that other people don't have it all together, that we're just trying to figure this thing out. And we're trying to understand the concept of God's love together every single day. 
Because we don't have it all together. And we don't have the answers, but God does. He is the one that gives us this. He is the one that gives us this opportunity. And so as we, we find ourselves recalculating and trying to figure out what that is, I, I want to end with this one final thing. Every single year, I get to be a part of our um, Super Summer Leadership Conference that we do uh, with our teenagers. And it, it's, I've been a part of it now for whew, 15 years, and it is absolutely awesome. And we get to take a, a group of kids uh, from different churches. It's churches from all over Ohio, and they get together and, and um, they, they, leadership training, and, and, and they're at different levels, and, and, and they get to learn different concepts in each one of their groups. Well, I get to teach a group of, like, just finished eighth grade. They're going to be freshmen the next year. I've been able to do that now for 15 years, which is wild to think about. But the key idea that we've always talked about is exactly what we're talking about this morning, and that's identity about who you are in Jesus Christ. And one concept that we found in a book years ago, and, and it's really meant a lot to me, and, and I think it might have helped me more than, than any student, any other adult. It has helped me in my life every single day to remind myself that the reason why we walk that older son's road, the reason why we find ourselves walking any other road other than the Father is because we start to believe these internal lies and these whispers that we hear in our ear and we listen to different voices instead of listening to the truth that God has put in front of us. And so we have to find ourselves in a place where we're dispelling those lies and we're getting rid of those lies and we're walking in God's truth, understanding and believing what He has taught us. Here's some of those big lies that many of us find ourselves believing. First big lie is this, I must meet certain standards to feel good about myself. You and I find ourselves in a place where if we can just do these things that day, I'm a good person. You went to church on Sunday, check it off folks, we're the righteous ones, right? Read my Bible this morning, I'm off to a good start, right? What we end up doing is if we, we knock those things off of our checklist, somehow we're in a better standing with God, and I feel better about myself. That's done. It's not bad to feel good about yourself, but what we end up doing is falling to this pit that if we don't do those things, then our whole life is miserable that day. Here's what the truth is. God loves you fully because of who you are, not what you do. Who you are, not what you do. You see, the younger son, he lived this life where he said, listen, because of what I did, because of the stupid mistakes that I have made, I am no longer to be called your son. Just make me one of your hired servants. No, no, no. The father wasn't having that. The father embraced him, held him, picked him up, shoes on his feet, robe on him, put a ring on his finger, and said, my son has returned. Let's party. It's not what you do. It's who you are. Are in Jesus Christ. Second lie is this. I must be approved and accepted by certain people in my life to feel good about myself. You see, when we're telling these things, I'm talking to a group of teenagers, so we're talking about girls groups, we're talking about guys on the football team, we're talking about people in debate, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, wait a minute, this concept works for me. I literally do this. There are people in my life that I want to please. There are people in my life who I want to like me. There are people in my life that I think if that person accepts me and thinks that I'm all right, I must be pretty cool. That's who I need acceptance from. I need to please that person, that person, that group, those people. If I can get in with that group, somehow I'm going to be a better person. Somehow I am going to be able to feel good about myself if I'm approved and accepted by them. God's truth says this, you are totally and completely accepted by God because of what Jesus Christ did for you. Isn't it a breath of fresh air to know today, guys? Isn't it good news? Listen, I hope this doesn't make you angry. Unfortunately, that's what happened with the Pharisees and them, the, the teachers of the law. They were angry at what Jesus was said. But I want you to know, this should be a relief to every single one of you hard workers out there. Listen to me. You are sitting there saying, if I don't do the work, I can't get in. If I don't be obedient, I can't get in. No, the truth is, you are accepted. You are loved. You are forgiven because of what Jesus did for you. That's the good news. That's what we all have to understand. And if we're able to do that, it's no longer about feeling good about myself. 
It's understanding the fact of what Jesus did for us. This is a tough one. Big lie number three. Those who fail, including myself, are unworthy of love and deserve to be punished. This is the 180 of your hard work, of my hard work. We tell ourselves that you have to work for your salvation. You have to work for your acceptance. And guess what? When you don't meet it, you deserve to be punished. God doesn't like you. God doesn't like me. Right? This is what we do. Every single day we tell ourselves that if we don't live up to the standards that we have made in our own heads, that somehow God doesn't accept and love us anymore. And what we end up doing, we project that upon everyone else. And when we see someone mess up and we see someone fall and we see someone stumble, we, mm -mm, mm -mm, they need to get down on their hands and knees and pray to God because their life is a mess. Trent talks about it all the time. We're, we're, we're very easy to, often to show even grace to ourselves, but not so much to other people. Because what we end up doing is we say that those who fail, those people who fail, including myself, we're hard on ourselves. Those people don't deserve love. Those people deserve actually to be punished. That's what you get. But God's truth said this. Jesus paid the full price, every bit of it, for my sin and for your sin. Isn't it wonderful that to, this morning to know that Christ's blood covers a multitude of sins? Isn't it awesome to know that when Jesus died on the cross, he paid, paid the full price for every stupid mistake that I have made, that I am making, and that I will ever make? That's awesome. That is amazing to remember. And the last lie is this, and I think a lot of people in our area fall into this. I am what I am. I cannot change. I am hopeless. Too many people are walking around this world living this life of no hope. We live in an area, guys, where people are walking around with no hope. They are stuck. They think there is no way to get out of where they are at, and they think this is how life has to be. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the truth, because God's truth tells us that you have been made brand new and complete in Jesus. You and I, Every single day, we get to walk in the newness of Christ because of what he did for every single one of us. Last time I spoke, this made so much sense to me when I heard a guy say, why do we struggle to get up in the morning? You might be a morning person. I'm not. Why do we struggle to get up in the morning? Because every single day just seems like a regular mundane day. Does a kid do that on Christmas morning? Does a kid do that when he's got a cool field trip the next day? Nope. Can't sleep. Can't sleep. Why? Because they're excited about what is ahead. When we live a life with Jesus, we are able to find ourselves in a spot where we can be excited about what the future holds. You and I have this good news in front of us, and you and I, even though we mess up, even though we stumble, we actually are able to live in the good news that every single day is made brand new and complete in Jesus. So this morning, one more time. What road are you, are you walking? Maybe you're on that younger son's road, all right? We, we've talked about it, but I didn't really bring it up as much. Maybe you're in a spot where you've been doing your own thing, and you know it. You know you've messed up. You know you, know you just, you're like, I, I did so many stupid things. I don't know why I do those things, but I keep going back to that. Or maybe you're on the older son's road. You've been doing all the right things. I want you to know that the older son and the younger son, they were both in a spot that they were away from the father, and went back to him. Your salvation is found in him, not in what you do. That's who changes everything. How do we get ourselves to recalculate to God's road? To get ourselves to a place where we understand his love and acceptance for us so that we can show it to other people in our lives every single day. And before we close, I just want to mention we're starting next week a brand new series we're going to be talking for the next few weeks about living that epic life. We're talking about how to live this life in God, what it means to truly walk God's way, to, to walk God's road. We're going to be talking about what it means to, that we come in contact with the people that we know. 
And so make sure this week, uh, if you're looking into it, we, we would love for you guys to be able to know that um, uh, you can sign up and get started and, and get ready for, for the weeks that are ahead as we start truly talking about what it means to live that epic life, to start living a life where we're not just waking up every day and it's a regular mundane day, but truly understanding that every single day is brand new and made complete and a gift from God. And here's the best news that I got for you this morning is that God loves you so much. He loves so much of who you are that he doesn't want you staying on that wrong road. He loves you so much that he's just going to keep hitting you with the recalculating. He's going to keep telling you, recalculating. And you're going to find yourself saying, no, 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 I'm going to keep going this way. He's going to say, no, 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 recalculate, recalculate. He's going to be letting you know why. Because he loves you too much. And because he loves you too much, even though that he accepts and loves you where you are, he cares about you too much to let you stay on that road. We have to figure out how to recalculate. Would you guys just close your eyes and bow your heads just really fast, and we're going to close. I appreciate you guys listening this morning. Two quick things. If, if you're sitting here right now and you're saying, I, I, I know that um, there's some recalculating being done in my life, and uh, I just want you to be praying and encouraging uh, me that, that I, can, I can start moving towards that, that, that way of life and that road that I'm supposed to be walking, Aaron. Would you just take uh, this week to pray for me? I want you to pray for me. Anybody this morning, like, I need to do some recalculating. Will you pray for me, Aaron? Uh, just slip your hand up so I can pray for you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Anybody else? I need to do some recalculating. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody this morning say, all this good news about Jesus, man, it's, it's, got, me, it's got me thinking for the first time. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. If that's you this morning, here's the awesome part. You can do it right now. You can start walking God's way right now. Maybe you're one of those sons. Maybe you're one of those people who thought your acceptance was found in your hard work. Maybe you're one of those that, that, that went off and did your own thing, and now you're ready to walk God's way. You want that this morning? Here's how you do it. Go to the Father. Go talk to the Father. All you have to do is repent and believe. All you have to do is call on his name, and he'll save you. And if you're like, I don't really know the words, you can pray something like this that I'm going to say. You, you, it doesn't have to be word for word, but you, talk to him and believe what you're saying. You can pray something like this. God, I know that I'm walking my own way. I know that I've messed up. I know that I've sinned. I recognize that now, and I'm sorry. God, forgive me. I want to walk the road of forgiveness and peace and grace that you show to me with everyone else in my life. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me. I accept him, and I want to live my life for you. If that's you this morning, would you do something for me? Would you just uh, slip your hand up and, and, and so I can recognize you? We're not going to bring you up front or anything. I just want people to know what happened so that we can be celebrating with you. Anybody this morning gave their life to Jesus? Anybody at all? God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your good news. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for the fact that we can learn from your truth, God. Help us to be able to figure out what those lies are that we are following every single day and dispel them and get them out of here. We want to be able to live your way, God, but it starts with seeing that recalculating button and coming to our senses and moving forward. We love you so much. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, thank you so much again for being here. We will see you back next week as we are kicking off our Epic Life series. We're taking donations for free for fall. Bring your stuff in. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you, guys.